started with a random value. In fact, I can actually slow this down. So this is the beauty of MATLAB. You can actually slow things down to see how things are being solved. So let me slow this down 100 times. So you can see that how the random values are being changed with each iteration, the value is improving. It is converging towards the final answer. This is what you call as converge, right? When people call, when people say divergence, that means that the answer is not tending towards the final answer. It's just continuously changing. It is not reaching a steady state. So this is a pretty cool simulation. I mean, it takes only three minutes to write, but it teaches you a lot about the importance of numerical analysis. And hopefully it is cool enough that you're interested in, you know, learning things like this in the future. All right. So I'm just going to kill this because this is going to take another 120 iterations. And you can see that we are already having a straight line profile. So what do you guys think about the presentation so far? Uh, would appreciate your comments. Like, what do you feel? Like when you see these type of simulations, what is going in your head currently? I would like to understand that. All right. So generally positive outlook. No one is basically, you know, uh, <laughs> dejected that they kind of missed out on the boat or something like that. So make sure that um, what career can we choose using this field? Well, that's the thing, right? The amount of opportunities that you have is just amazing learning numerical analysis, learning how to code, it opens up a lot of opportunities. You can work in manufacturing companies, automotive companies, energy related companies. Well, not only that, you can work with software companies where you actually get a mechanical engineering role. If you don't believe me, check for thermal management engineers in companies like Google and Facebook. In those companies, mechanical engineers are using simulation softwares to make sure that Google and Facebook's computers are safe, right? And to do all of these things, it's not like they're using MATLAB, they're using a CFD software like IcePack or something like that. But then they are writing scripts. They're writing scripts to test thousands of designs. And all those scripts are sometimes written in MATLAB or sometimes they're written in Python. But at the end of the day, they are both programming languages. If you learn one programming language, you can learn another programming language. It's basically like if you know how to extrude in SolidWorks, you can figure out how to extrude in Kataya in like 30 seconds, right? <clears throat> All right, perfect. So uh, what is the next example that I wanted to talk about? Uh, the next example is, you know, you can keep on doing this and you can build as complex as of a project as you want. In fact, I'm not going to go into the details of this particular project, but what I have here, it might seem very simple is basically this code is actually a simple CFD solver. I'm pretty sure many of you have heard of ANSYS Fluent, all right, or ANSYS CFX, it's the CFD solver. What I've done is I've created a very simple version of that in MATLAB to solve the flow through a supersonic nozzle, right? Again, the, the complexity might be a bit hard to digest at this point, but let me just run the code. This might look very simple, but at the end of the day, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually solving for how the density, temperature and velocity changes inside a supersonic nozzle. That is just think about the capability, like think about the amount of work that you can do. Think about the possibilities that you will have if you have a project like this in your resume. And to do this, you don't have to, it's not like uh, this is impossible at an undergraduate level. Students in US universities, some students in India are doing projects like this. Why can't you do it? And it doesn't matter which programming language you use. You can do this in MATLAB or C++. Just pick one what we are comfortable with. And to answer Mihir's question, what is more important for mechanical engineering, C++ or MATLAB? I think that is a very wrong question. And this is why many students are not learning anything because most of the time is spent in deciding which software to learn. Remember, it doesn't matter if you, if you learn a great tool and if you're really shallow, meaning if you just know how to click buttons in a, in a great tool like ANSYS Fluent, then your experience doesn't matter. But if you learn C++, but if you're able to code your own CFD solver, something like what I've done here, that is going to be far more valuable. All right, that is what you need to focus. So Ramana Shiva has asked another question, which is a nice question. Can you please tell me why we have to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors? So this is kind of taking a divergence or taking a tangent. I was talking about something else, but that's fine. So Ramana Shiva, uh, when, you, when you talk about simulation softwares, 
right? So for example, if you take multi-body dynamic simulator simulations, you're simulating a robotic arm, right? Or if you take vehicle dynamics, you're simulating a suspension system, how the knuckle moves and all that stuff. When you're doing this <clears throat> using a computer programming, what you're doing is you're creating a matrix. When you solve this matrix, you're getting the displacements and velocities. This is what you call as an equation of motion. The equation of motion is usually an ordinary differential equation because it's F equal to MA at the end of the day. F equal to MA, if you take acceleration, it's nothing but the second derivative of displacement. So D square X by DT square, right? You take that, you integrate it a couple of times, you get the answer for it. Now you have a linear system. Now the linear system has certain properties. Eigenvalues and eigenvectors are one of its properties. The reason why you look at eigenvalues is it basically tells you if the system can be solved accurately in a timely manner or not. That is why people look at eigenvalues for iterative solvers. All right. Now, if you're thinking about, um, now if you're thinking about uh, face facial recognition application, for example, if you're using Snapchat or if you're using Facebook Messenger, if you look into the camera, it basically fits a face, right? How does it do it? It uses a technique called as, uh, it, it uses facial recognition. And how does that work behind? Like for example, if you put a photo on Facebook, it immediately tells you that, hey, it's the photo of you, right? It's not like an engineer in Facebook is saying that, okay, this is Ramana's photo. This is Kunal's photo. This is uh, Mehan's photo, right? No one's doing that. They use a technique called PCA. Uh, it's one of the techniques, a bit old. There are a lot of new techniques. It's called as principal component analysis. What, at the end of the day, though the workflow is very complex, the eigenvalues basically helps the computer recognize your face. Looking at the eigenvalues, it can basically say that, okay, this is the face of Ramana represented as a matrix. And the change in eigenvalues helps us understand the change in phase differences between you and me. Does it kind of make sense?